All right, Tulsi Kratz and uh, free radicals like myself and a few of you uh, Bernie Kratz and people that just don't have any party affiliation, uh, welcome. I am Dave and this is the Radical Independent. Uh, Tulsi Gabbard on the campaign trail. This is a very important piece of video here uh, filmed in Las Vegas. This gentleman here is asking a question about the establishment and their plans, which include obviously trying to uh, not have Tulsi Gabbard on the stage to prevent her from getting to the debate stage via rigged polling, because that's what it is. Uh, it's what, what determines a DNC approved poll now, what I'm concerned about, obviously, is without the exposure of the debates, does the Tulsi Gabbard campaign cease to exist? Technically, no, but theoretically, yes. I think she needs to be in these debates uh, for the reasons that, unfortunately, aren't good reasons. It's more for credibility it's more for saying, hey, I'm a serious candidate. Look at me. Uh, I'm up here on stage with whoever, Joe Biden. And her and Tom Steyer apparently are very close to meeting the threshold. There were a couple of articles I read yesterday. Uh, I think Tulsi technically needs one more poll. And I've been predicting that she's going to fall, mysteriously, she's going to fall one poll short. Uh, and I'm hoping that's not the case. I really want to be wrong because uh, Tulsi Gabbard does a lot of good for the debate itself. She makes the debate watchable for me because there's nobody else up there I'm really interested in listening to. Yeah, it was kind of cool to see Marianne Williamson and Andrew Yang. A lot of the Yang people are getting upset because... Uh, his polling data has fallen substantially. And uh, I'm not a big Yang person because his foreign policy is absolutely an abomination. Plus, he is a Russian hoax guy. Uh, if you listen to him talk about Trump and Russia, we've got, look, Andrew, you, you want to do UBI, right? So you might want to stick to info and details and facts and uh, and stay away from uh, conspiracy mongering. I know you want to get your message out on MSNBC and so forth, but it's really the last thing people want to hear, uh, or at least uh, people who are on what I would call the new left or uh, the indie progressive, somewhat conservative, at times uh, somewhat libertarian, uh, I mean, you can't really put a label on a person like myself. You know, I've tried to label myself, and it's it's not really possible. And I don't really care what you want to consider my political affiliation. Right now, I'm most concerned about endless wars. Uh, people are now starting to talk about Donald Trump in new ways, where he is a budget buster. He is a guy who wants to explode the deficit. Uh, these are people on the right, and they're correct. They're correct. Nobody voted for Donald Trump. Tea Party people didn't go and vote for Donald Trump, most of them. I don't know where they all went, actually. They just stopped um, doing what they do. I know they're probably around, and some of them may be somewhat principled, but they've got to acknowledge that we're exploding the debt. And we're doing it on the backs of the military-industrial complex. That's where we're doing it. Hey, we're not doing it on... If we were doing it on Medicare for All, I would say at least it's, it's going to a worthy cause. And I would probably still say, well, we need to get costs under control. And we need to, you know, use that Bernie tax on those Wall Street transactions. Maybe we put another tax on a few Wall Street transactions. Look, the stock market is up like, I know it, it fluctuates, but it's up an incredible amount. These people, uh, they could probably afford a, a very nominal transaction so you and I can have 
healthcare that actually works works for everybody. All right, so I want to play this clip. I don't know if I'm going to be able to hear, uh, you're going to be able to hear this guy, um, but I'm sure you're going to hear Tulsi's response to this. This is very telling about who Tulsi Gabbard is. Threshold, but the polling threshold is That's the right. one that I hope with you know the way you slayed Kamala. I hope yeah. 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 Yeah.
I heard a lot of stories about what happened here in 2016. So I'm not naive to the, the pitfalls and the holes that lie before us, but we've got to have faith in the strength that we have as people. Change won't come overnight. We've got a lot of battles ahead of us. But if for whatever reason we get shut out of debates, guess what? We have the ability to organize platforms, continue to get our message out, continue to get our voice out. Saying that, it's important to be in these debates given the millions of people who watch them. So what's my plan? Pursue all avenues of approach. There you go. All avenues. Uh, and so she did say, organize, <clears throat> organize platforms. And I know what that means to a lot of people. It means, oh no, it's just going to be some cranky, independent, uh, progressive type person. Uh, she's not going to get a hearing on platforms like TYT. Thank goodness. I don't want her to even go near that place. Uh, they're they're trying to elect Elizabeth Warren now, and pretty much most of the mainstream so-called center-left uh, neoliberal media is working on the Elizabeth Warren campaign. And why are they doing that? Number one, because they don't like Bernie Sanders a whole lot. And Bernie is unacceptable to them because of things like Medicare for All and the Free College and, you know, these ideas which... Uh, when they air on outlets like MSNBC, they're presented as socialism. You could call that a right-wing talking point, whatever you want to call it. I mean, the progressives themselves do a crappy job explaining what it is they're advocating for. And again, when I made this switch, okay, the supposed switch that I made, uh, I look at each issue now individually. I don't go, okay, I'm a blanket progressive on every issue because I'm not. I'm somewhat conservative on uh, social and moral questions, uh, although I don't advocate for others. In other words, if you don't hold those views, I don't look at you and say, oh, I have no use for you. I say, okay, we disagree on that, but then we agree on the crisis of this endless war machine. Somebody sent me a video uh, by this guy who's got a channel called The New Left. I watched it in horror because the dude outlined all of our current military conflicts and the number of people who have lost their lives. Again, I, I don't know where the peace movement has gone. Do people just, are they just, we've, we've created this consumerism society. We're consumed with, you know, stuff. We're consumed with social media. We're consumed with our stinking cell phones. We can't put them down, okay? We need to start looking up from the cell phone and paying attention. Yes, you can get a lot of great information from your phone, but then you need to put footsteps and actions and financial transactions behind uh, your country, the love of the country that you have before it's too late, before we'll never get it back. I mean, Trump is full steam ahead on all this stuff. He hasn't fired my, uh, uh, John Bolton yet. I was going to say Michael Bolton. <laughs> That's the music side of me here. Um, he hasn't fired John Bolton. He's still there. Okay? We need a Tulsi Gabbard, folks. Tulsi is planning on just staying the course and moving forward. And good, because that's what I was hoping to hear. I don't want this to end. If, if she falls one debate or one poll short to get into the debate, I'm going to say, see, I told you so. And then I'm going to say, all right, we dig in. And we need to start to talk to people who have larger platforms. I'm thinking Jimmy Dore. I'm thinking Kyle Kalinske. There are others out there. Uh, people who can ask decent questions about policy. And I'm sure none of the neo-libs are going to want to be on a real progressive platform. Or maybe they will. Maybe they'll try to explain their case 
and uh, we can have a debate, and that's what a debate should be. You explain your case, then someone else explains their case, and then the viewer uh, gets to discern and decide uh, which candidate uh, best represents them and their values. And I do believe indie media could pull, you know, maybe 100,000 viewers. Uh, and I, I know it sounds a little bit crazy, but, you know, you watch, uh, like, the Jimmy Dore show, and it's an unannounced thing, and it just shows up, and the people who have subscribed, they tune in. And I've seen, you know, I think I've seen 20,000 people on there at a time. I've seen some pretty high numbers. We need, what needs to happen, though, is the word needs to get out on Twitter, Facebook, wherever you do social media. I will do my part. I will continue to make videos highlighting these things, but we need to focus on issues, people. You need to talk to your friends and neighbors about issues. Don't talk to them about Russian collusion. I know none of you probably are, but if they engage you that way, say, look, my kid is up to their eyeballs in student loan debt, or my adult son uh, can't pay down his student loans, therefore he can't buy a house. These are nuts and bolts things that we need to talk about. Uh, and identity politics, I would just look. Tulsi Gabbard, do you want to play the ID politics game? Tulsi Gabbard, first woman, first woman of color, uh, first Hindu. I mean, you go down the list of things that she would accomplish as far as breaking the glass ceiling. She'd break the glass ceiling without doing it in a way that looks self-serving. Because people aren't look, people are looking at her because she's got merit. Okay, this is a merit-based campaign, which happens to to take care of a lot of this so-called intersectionality that the uh, the tribalist team seems to enjoy. By the way, the tribalists aren't they're not interested in Tulsi Gabbard, which makes no sense. Because again, I, they they've got Elizabeth Warren over there. They got the older white woman who is going to not be the older white man, Bernie Sanders. Okay, they've got their new Hillary. Okay, she's a new, fresher version of Hillary. Uh, she doesn't fall into the Scooby van when she's uh, through speaking. Apparently, she's got a little bit of an endurance of endurance, and you know she's healthier and um, she leans progressive, but basically dropping green bombs on people using a greener military uh, isn't impressive to me. It's, it's the status quo wrapped in a pretty bow. All right. So Tulsi staying the course. Good. That's good news. Um, I'm still hoping she'll get into that debate. And, uh, if you answer a phone, you're not sure that number, you think it's a robocall. Um, you might want to answer the call. I hate to say this because it might be a pollster. And there are ways to get included in polls and to put your name on a list. It's complicated, but uh, I don't know all of the ins and outs of it. I've never been called, so uh, they don't want to talk to me. <laughs> I'll give them an earful. So, in any event, Tulsi Gabbard, she is the Iron Maiden, and she continues. Uh, and she'll keep going no matter what happens with uh, this rigged dnc primary because it's it's rigged again people it's rigged you can see it it's coming all right talk to you soon